In today's video, I will show how you can automatically save email attachments with an 8N to Air table. And I know this workflow sounds very simple and straightforward, but believe me, before I started working a lot with an 8N, I used to struggle with this uh, type of workflow because there's actually no straightforward way of getting the attachments, for example, from email, sorting through them, filtering them, uh, getting their names in order, and then actually outputting them or uploading them to any of the service such as Google Drive, or in this case, Airtable. So let's jump into my computer screen and right away we can see how we're going to build this and what we're going to learn. So basically in this video, I'm going to show how you can get those email attachments in N8N, how we can configure your email at attachments for filtering because we want to be able to filter out Excel attachments, JPEG, PDF attachments. We don't usually need all of them because different businesses have different use cases. And then finally, we're going to be able to upload those attachments to Airtable, which is another tricky part, because as you probably know, in N8N, there is no default node for uploading files to Airtable. So also probably a good point, uh, yeah, a good time to mention this, but all of my newsletter subscribers get all of my uh, latest workflows for free. So you always get previous week's workflow for free if you subscribe to my newsletter. So uh, yeah, subscribe to that. But now let's jump into the video right away. Uh, okay, the first thing we need to do is actually set up a trigger. And for that, I'm going to use Gmail trigger on message received. Uh, for this, of course, I'm going to pick the right credential uh, where I have email attachments, because as you can right now see, I have sent myself a test attachments over here, and we're going to be downloading those attachments and filtering them out. So let's go back to N8N. Basically, I'm not going to change anything here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unselect simplify. I'm going to go into add option and select download attachments. So this is a crucial step because if you don't enable this, basically you're not going to be able to get them, but I have enabled them and I'm going to press fetch attachments and we're going to get both of the attachments. As you can see, there's Slack channels.csv file, and then there's SEO agent improvement recommendations.pdf. So we have two files and attachments. Now, the next step is very tricky because there are so many ways you can do this to get files, to download attachments, to sort through them. Um, but I found the best way to do it is just with code node because other way uh, it gets very, I don't know, messy. It just bloats your workflow and I don't like that. Um, so I decided to use code node. And for that, I actually written all of this code by OpenAI with ChatGPT. I didn't actually write it myself because who does that these days? <laughs> so uh, I'm going to paste this in here. And basically what this code actually does, it splits those attachments into separate files and then allows us um, to actually manage the data or the files very easily. So what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to rename this as uh, split out attachments like so, and I'm going to hit test step. After we do that, you probably notice that we have two separate items because as you can see over here, we got it as one single item, but now we have as two separate items and we have one data item and we have another data item. So one is PDF, one is CSV. Great. We already split out the attachments. We're moving very, very fast with this workflow. Now, the next step we need to do is add a filter node. Why? Because, for example, in my business case, I want to filter out only PDFs. So to do that, what I'm going to do, let me think. So first of all, I'm going to add string contains condition in the filter. And here I'm going to choose expression. In the expression, we have curly brackets, then I'm going to select from earlier notes, split out attachments over here. Then we go into item dot binary dot data dot mime type. And as you can see, this brings out the mime type. In this case, it shows the first files mime type, which is text CSV. So in here, since I want only PDF attachments, I'm going to type in PDF. That's it. And hit test step. And as you can see, now we have one kept item, which is a PDF file. And then we have a discarded item, which is a CSV. Um, 
And that's pretty much it with the filter. Very straightforward and very easy. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a loop. Why loop? Because if, for example, we were receiving emails with hundreds of attachments and I'm uploading those into Airtable, you know, I don't want to upload 100 attachments at a time because usually APIs have limits. For example, I don't exactly know, but around, let's say, 60 requests you can make per minute to Airtable. That's I just picked that out of my head. I don't know the actual number, but let's say that's the actual number. And if you have 100 attachments, you're going to reach the limit very soon. So that's why I add loop in this case. But for the next node, I'm going to select extract uh, from file. And in this case, where was it? Where was it? Extract from PDF. Oh, no, no, nah, that's that's completely wrong. I need to delete this and select file where was it extract from file yeah extract from file and then move file to base 64 string so this is very important if you skip this step where you have to move file to base 64 string you're not going to be able to upload this file to Airtable in some other situations for example with Google Drive uh, I think you can do it without this, but with Airtable, you have to have this node in place. So let's just hit test step and let's see what we got. So we got the data as base 64 string uh, from this node, which is great. Exactly what we need. And actually, we are one node away from having this Oh no, actually, I lied again, two nodes away from having this workflow finished. So the next step that we need to do is select create a record. And for that, I'm going to select Airtable and I'm going to pick create record. I just need to know, need to remember which database I have to pick. We have to pick a contact database like so, and we have to pick email attachments. So I actually need to log in into my Airtable. So give me a second. Now I've logged in into my Airtable just so you see and keep an eye on all what's going on. So I'm going to delete the previous records, not to confuse you, but basically I have fields, email name, file name, sender name, PDF attachment. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to N8N. And since we're creating the record in this particular table, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add the variables. So the first variable that we're going to add is going to be all of them are going to be expressions. So that's good to know. We're going to go into the Gmail trigger. Then we're going to type in item.json.headers.subject. Bam, we have the email name. So that's test attachments. Then the file name. Again, let's pick expression over here. I'm going to type it in like so. Uh, we are going to select keep attachments or just filter. Yeah, filter. Then I'm going to select dot item dot binary dot um, data dot file name. So here we are, we have the file name here, then the sender email. So again, we let's go just to Gmail trigger, like so copy paste it, select expression, then I think it's going to be in the headers dot from and yeah, yeah, here we have it. Um, oh, no, I've typed it in in a wrong field. So basically just copy paste into sender email. Bam, let's delete this. And we have email name, file name, sender uh, email. That's where we're going to upload all of the data. So the next thing we can do is hit test step. And we already can see that we created a record in Airtable, but unfortunately, we still haven't uploaded the attachment. For that, what we need to do is go back to workflow. And this is where the tricky part with the Airtable comes in, because Airtable doesn't support this type of stuff by default, which is annoying. But we're going to make an HTTP request. So select HTTP request. Um, and we're going to make basically a call to N8 and I mean to Airtable API. That way we're going to have the opportunity to upload that file um, to Airtable. So select post for the URL. This is going to be very interesting because I'm going to copy paste 
uh, the previous value they have uh, saved it. But as you can see, we'll, we're going to have the URL HTTPS, then content.airtable.com slash v0 slash. This is going to be uh, the ID of your um, basically base. So this is the base that usually starts with app. So then you're going to paste it in here. Then you're going to put a slash and this is going to take the record ID, the record ID from the previous record over here from the air table, then slash, we're going to type in the name of this particular column, which is PDF attachment and then slash upload attachment. So like so basically upload attachment is on always going to be like so PDF attachment is going to be based on your column how you named it in Airtable this is the record ID which I'm adding dynamically and this is the table ID which you can find in here as I already mentioned so we have that configured next thing we need to select is the authentication so for the predefined credential type i'm going to select this because i already have my airtable api which is airtable personal access token api which is most likely what you have as well so we don't have to worry about that much then in the headers i'm going to enable this i'm going to copy paste so the content type which is usually what you have to send. And then for the value application slash JSON. Now, moving on, the important part, we have to configure the body. So let's send the body over here. I'm select using JSON and I'm going to copy paste again the previous value, but I'm going to explain everything I'm using. So I'm going to select an expression. I'm going to make this big. And we have to send three parameters in JSON. We have to send content type. We have to send the file and the file name. So first of all, as you can see uh, over here, I previously had different, uh, different names for four uh, nodes. But here I'm going to select filter. And as you can see, there's going to be basically node filter dot item dot binary dot data dot mime type. And then in the file name, again, I'm going to type in filter and I'm going to have filter dot item dot binary dot data dot file name. And here it gets filled out like so. So let me just scroll, scroll, scroll. That's the base data. And this is the file name. Cool. We have everything. So if I'm going to hit test step, we're going to see it running. And of course, I'm going to leave this in and we can go back. You can see that actually a new record was created and we've added that attachment. So I open it up. I can see SEO agent improvement recommendations and so on. Uh, we can see from which email it was received, uh, so on and so forth. But let's delete this. Let's delete this. And now, for example, we have the finished workflow, which has been pain in my ass for quite some time until I learned this. But now, for example, if I decide to uh, remove the filter, let's say the condition is that string exists and that's it. So it's going to pass all of the files. And for example, I come here, it's all of the here deleted. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit test uh, workflow. And you will notice that, for example, in this case, since we remove the filter, it extracts both of the attachments and uploads them both into Airtable. So for example, you come here, boom, one attachment, which is a CSV, and then a, another attachment, which is, you know, a PDF. And this can become very useful if you're building workflows for your clients or for your business, where you basically have to manage a lot of attachments from your Gmail and you just basically need to organize it or you're, I don't know, doing accounting for someone and you need to save all of those invoices or whatever in the Airtable in an organized fashion. This works like a charm. So if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the like, don't forget to subscribe. And as well, remember that all of the email newsletter subscribers get uh, last week's workflow for free. Or if you want, there's a link where you can download it. So that being said, again, I already said it, but yeah, see you in the next one.